It started out simple enough. Spider-Man was a smash hit in the comics, so they put him in his own cartoon show. That cartoon show was so popular and so iconic that Spider-Man was a logical choice to star in his own live-action series. That show was cancelled almost immediately, although episodes were edited together and released as a series of feature films in other countries. Now at about the same time in Japan, a Spider-Man show was made that also had nothing to do with the comics, but featured Spider-Man battling the Iron Cross army and fighting their monsters using Leopardon, his giant robot. Spider-Man was an international icon, so naturally Hollywood wanted to make a movie of it. In the 80s and 90s, they were trying to do Spider-Man as a low-budget monster movie until the team from The Terminator took over with plans for a mega-budget blockbuster starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Arnold Schwarzenegger. From there, it devolved into a legal battle that bankrupted every studio involved with it and Marvel itself that only ended when Team Spider-Man promised not to make a rival James Bond movie if Team Bond promised not to make a rival Spider-Man movie. With all rights secured and everyone who might argue already bankrupt, Sony fast-tracked Spider-Man for a 2002 release directed by lifelong Spider-Man fan Sam Raimi. It was a runaway smash hit and laid the groundwork for Spider-Man 2, a frequent contender for best comic book movie of all time. Raimi was about to go make his dream Spider-Man movie for the third one, the horror one where Spider-Man fights the Lizard and Sandman. But the producers stepped in and basically gave him orders to swap out Lizard for Venom and a list of comics characters to introduce. Spider-Man 3 is considered a disappointment by most fans, but Raimi and his cast were going to stick around for Spider-Man's 4 and 5. But Sony wanted those movies so fast, and everyone was still exhausted from making the previous trilogy, that Sony decided to start all over again with a new cast, a new director, bringing in Mark Webb. By this point, Marvel had climbed out of bankruptcy, started making their own movies, and built the interconnected movie universe we all love today. Sony quickly announced a multi-movie universe would be spun out of The Amazing Spider-Man, where the lizard finally made it to the screen in 2012, followed by announcements that Venom and Sinister Six movies would continue out of the upcoming Amazing Spider-Man 2. That movie had some of the best Spider-Man action we've seen in the movies yet, but the consensus among fans is that the movie suffers from too many decisions being made by producers before the writers have even got to it yet. It was successful at the box office, but the least successful of all the Spider-Man movies. In an unprecedented move, Sony cancelled all plans for the next movie in their Spider-Man series and announced that a new version of Spider-Man would join the Marvel Cinematic Universe and appear in a Marvel movie in 2016 before starring in a new Spider-Man solo movie coming in July 2017. I want to see this movie with people who watch my videos. What city should we come to? Let me know in the comments and maybe I'll see you at the preview screening of the new Spider-Man. I put up a new video every Friday, so hit that subscribe, you'll get not only my art videos like this one, but my hilarious cosplay comedy videos. Shoutouts this week for Ender Swift Gaming, Kobe Walsh, Dahlia Orozco, and Aiden Holland. New subscriber alert, Owen Heishi, Mr. Cyber, Jaden Clark, and Josie Herrera. Are you a new subscriber, or what was your favorite part of this video? Let me know in the comments, we'll shout you out.